Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are all doing well on this lovely day. Let's kill the slides. Thank you for joining us today. Spotlight on GSMC. What an intriguing afternoon it will be for us, or at least a one hour. We're not going to take too much of your time today, but an hour to find out who is GSMC, who makes up GSMC, what does GSMC do? What are some of the products that come from GSMC? A wonderful initiative by our communications department within the Aga Khan University to find out who we are internally. 
sometimes we market a lot to people out there and forget to tell us internally about who we are. So this initiative, I believe, is part of that package for the rest of us, Aga Khan community, the Aga Khan family, to get to know a little bit about us more than just the things we see on the website in terms of what we do. And that's what we'll be sharing with you this afternoon from us as staff members, faculty, our students, the programs that we do offer, and some of the other areas, for instance, the Media Innovation Center. What is that? Some of us may have heard about it. What is that? Who are the ones who run it? And what do they do? But we have something interesting and exciting for you today as well. Apart from just that, there is a quiz. Yes, we're in academia, so you expect a test or some sort. There is a small quiz that will be shared with you in your chat box. So pay attention to your chat box. Have a look over there. The quiz will ask you certain questions about what you're going to see this afternoon. And it'll be open till about 4.15, 4 o'clock, 4.15, 4 and then we'll close it to find the winners. And yes, there'll be winners. What do the winners get? We have something for you. We have wonderful water bottle for somebody out there. A beautiful, beautiful mug that I truly believe in. You see, I'm using one, free marketing. Keeps your drinks hot and your drinks cold, depending on you, You're coming into cold season. So this will be a wonderful thing for you to keep yourself warm during the cold season. And who can have enough bags? Nobody can have enough bags. We all want another bag and another bag. And this is a really cool bag, very sturdy, made out of material we call Cordura. So those are the prizes for three tattoo lucky winners out there. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's move very quickly into who we are. We got something. We're not going to do the usual round of introductions of staff members and what we all do individually. We got another side on who we are as GSMC. Let's watch this. Hi, I'm Lawrence Sintak. I'm the dean of GSNC. I like to tell people that I'm a journalist masquerading as an academic. I covered the world for many years as a CBS correspondent. I helped build journalism schools in the U.S. and various other places. And now I'm here, kind of, sort of. I commute between Kenya and Scotland. Doesn't everybody? And my secret skill is I like to race big sailboats. Hi, my name is Nancy Buka. I'm an assistant professor and the director of academic affairs here at the Graduate School of Media and Communications. My secret skill is interior design. I not only spend my time dreaming about the spaces, but I also create them. So if you want your place turned around into this beautiful space, reach out. My name is Peter Kimani, a senior lecturer at GSMC and the founding lecturer. Uh, my special skill is reggae. Uh, I wanted to be a reggae DJ. Maybe it's not too late to be an arty professor. Or if you have an event, you could have me come spin the discs. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Kamau, faculty member at the Graduate School of Media and Communications. I joined GSMC back in 2015. I teach in the MA program and the professional development courses. What's my special skill? I pick sense, good and bad sense, along the corridors, in the offices, cars, airports, in the lift, I just notice sense. One of the things I love doing is helping my friends pick the right sense for themselves or their special someone. If you need help in picking the right perfume, you know who to talk to. Hi, my name is Gitonga Bijiwe and I serve here at the Graduate School of Media and Communications. My special skill or hobby at the moment is growing traditional gourds, particularly the larger ones for some good uji or milk. So, if you want one sometime later, you know who to see. Bye. Hi, my name is Saraya Shah. I work here at the Aga Khan University's Graduate School of Media and Communications in Nairobi, Kenya. 
I'm currently in charge of communications for this school, as well as looking after our grants part portfolio and our civil society portfolio as well. So I'm a jack of all trades and a master of all as well. Um, my secret skill is to design tribal tattoos. So if you're thinking of getting a tattoo and want a tribal, get in touch, let's chat. I'll be happy to help. And yeah, have a lovely day. Bye. My name is Marion Yoki. I am the Studio Technical Operations Manager at the Graduate School of Media and Communications. So basically, broadcast is my space. I also like to mentor girls who are taking STEM subjects, that is mathematics, sciences, and engineering. And my special skill is cooking Swahili dishes like uh, biryani, pilau, roast potato, and cassava. And you're welcome to my home for a dish. I'm Ali Khan Pir Mohammed. I run the professional development and executive education trainings here at the school. I'm here to dispel all rumors that I am a coffee addict or wannabe barista. I've heard some people even mention that I may have more than seven coffee machines at home. That is absolutely, that is true, that is absolutely true. Um, so if you want a great coffee, give me a call. Hi, my name is Christine Madoka. And aside from handling communications at the Graduate School of Media and Communications, I'm also the resident creative. My secret skill is that I grow orchids. And for those of you who have orchids know how difficult it is to get them to bloom. Sometimes you have to take real good care of them and even talk to them. So if you're looking at starting your own orchid collection or you just want to talk about orchids, you know where to find me. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is John Yaga. I do business development for GSMC. Um, something interesting about me is that I like technology, I like gadgets, I like software, and my friends say that's weird because I don't own a TV. Um, but if you're looking to buy a new gadget or figure out an algorithm, I'm the guy for you. But I'm not trying to replace IT. <laughs> Hi guys. My name is Augustine Getonga Nyaga. I am the librarian here at GSMC. An interesting thing about me, I love preaching and teaching the word. My secret skill, I love singing. I sing bass in the choir and I lead worship. Babaye tu wambinguni tunaleta sifa kwako. If you wish to hear more, you know where to find me. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is George Ngugi Mwangi. I'm the assistant librarian at GSMC Resource Center. Uh, basically we deal with information retrieval and dissemination. Uh, my secret skill in life is in all coil collection. I love collecting coins from different countries and for storage purposes. If you have any old coins lying somewhere, you actually know where to bring them. Thank you very much. Hi guys, my name is Marietta Mosioka. I coordinate the programmatic and administrative functions at GSMC. I really love writing, specifically human interest stories. I got quite a number that has been published already, tens that have not yet been published. Yeah, I am thinking about opening a, a blog, so you could check me out there when it's up. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Laban Mwangi. I work at DSMC. I serve at the studio and ICT. One interesting thing about me is that I'm a cartoonist. I use satire in my illustration. This almost got me kicked out of high school. To get to see more about me, you can contact me so that I can give you access to my portfolio. Bye. Hello, my name is Daniel Mwangi. I work here at Graduate School of Media and Communication as an ICT and virtual learning environment support. And my second skill is that I'm an amateur motorsport racer. And my dream car to race with is Mitsubishi Evolution FQ440MR. And if you have one, I'm coming for it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sandy Okesa. I'm a Stella Executive Assistant. My secret skill is event planner. I plan most of the birthdays for my brothers and sisters my nephews and nieces. Now you know who I am. Hi, my name is Henry Kibira. I'm the teaching assistant at the Graduate School of Media and Communications. Basically, I bring energy and synergy to the entire team. Uh, one thing that people have never known about me is that I am a poet. I write and recite poems. 
Wanadamu tulolimika Sikiza nufaya miti Momo nyoko wazulika Akivuli hewani miti If you need a poet, then you know who to look for. Thank you very much. We also have our friends, the other part of the Graduate School of Media and Communications, the Media Innovation Center, and who they are. I'm Joki Shege. I work as the director of the Innovation Center of the Graduate School of Media and Communications at the Aga Khan University, East Africa. My name is Hesbon Hansen Uchiyong Owila. I'm the research associate at the Graduate School of Media and Communication, working here at the Media Innovation Center, Aga Khan University. Hi, my name is Claire Mogere, Grants Administrator, um, GSMC, the Media Innovation Center, Aga Khan University. Hi guys, my name is Caleb. I am the Communications Officer, uh, GCMC Media Innovation Center, Aga Khan University. Hi, I'm Benson, Community Manager at the GSMC, Aga Khan University Media Innovation Center. Ladies and gentlemen, is the team that makes up the Graduate School of Media and Communications right here at the Aga Khan University. And you've seen them in their different lights and what they can do. And we were sharing with you some special things from tattoo makers to boat and car races. I wonder, can the Dean and Daniel go head to head, coast to the land show and see who will win? I wonder, interior designers, and we have those in floriculture growing orchids. A lot of dynamic and interesting people we have uh, among us. So when you see us walking around with our ties and our suits and jackets and wonderful pantsuits, remember, there's that other side that does make us human too. It's not just about academia grades and debating over big tables. We hope you'll take care of that and engage with us. I can see on our chat box, we have some wonderful friends who are visiting us today, Alea, Irene, Julia, long time, I haven't seen you in a while, as well as Roxana and Stefan, those are our partners with DWA, and we're glad they could join us. And somebody I took a class with, Ken Jenga, across the way in the medical college, great having you with us today. And we are so excited you're joining us today to learn a little bit about GSMC. Let's go into a little bit into the nitty gritty now about what we really do. Where is our vision? The direction we are going. To help us through that is our boat racer, none other than the Dean, Dr. Lawrence Pintak. Thank you so much, Katanga. Thank you uh, for everyone <laughs> at GSMC who is with us and everyone across AKU who is with us. Um, we are a communication school. We are based in East Africa, but we see ourselves as part of the bigger AKU footprint. Um, we thoroughly enjoy working with every aspect of this university, and we're doing our best to try to reach out and form relationships and, and go forward with projects with a variety of organizations. Right now, we're working with Sonam on a, uh, a campaign to help the world understand the role of nurses. Uh, we're working with the education schools, both in East Africa and in Pakistan, on a media literacy campaign, the early stages of which we're beginning to test up in Chitral in, in northern Pakistan. Uh, we are working with uh, the, uh, well, we will be, we certainly hope to be working with the med school on health communications because communicating health issues is one of the things that we teach our journalism students about how to cover <laughs> health and one of the things that would be critical to our new strategic communication master's degree, helping people who actually communicate about health issues. And we're working on broad media literacy programs that will help journalists and the broader public through the Aga Khan Foundation and Development Network to understand how to avoid fake news, how to separate fact from fiction. And of course, as the undergrad curriculum rolls out, we will also be playing a role. Uh, ultimately, we'll be expanding our programs up into Pakistan. We're working with the associate dean up there to make that happen. So we see ourselves as citizens of AKU, not just GSMC. 
So for that, now I will throw it over to Nancy Booker, who is the director of our academic programs. Nancy? Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pintek, and uh, a good afternoon uh, from wherever you're joining us. Um, here in Nairobi, it's afternoon, and the weather is very nice out there. Um, so I'm the director of academic affairs, and um, I'll just, you know, um, share my presentation in the form of a story. Um, in 2018, we opened our doors to our inaugural class of 25 students into our Master of Arts in Digital Journalism program. And we we're very excited about this, um, a new kid on the block uh, that, that had come to us in the form of an academic program. Uh, over the years, that program has grown and we currently have admitted four cohorts into the, into the Master of Arts in Digital Journalism program with a student population of about 124 students. Our students come from you know, the larger East African region. We have students from Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, and as the Dean has uh, rightly put it, we are looking at expanding not just within the region, but also you know, across continents. And so we are very optimistic about uh, you know, the future of GSMC in terms of expanding our growth uh, beyond uh, the East African region. Uh, very recently, um, as recent as February this year, we launched our um, new academic program, the Executive Masters in Media Leadership and Innovation. And this program you know, brings together a, a very impressive cohort of 21 students who are media leaders, media managers, drawn from uh, the three countries. And it's been a very, very exciting journey, not just being able to impact journalists who are you know, charged with the responsibility of telling stories and reporting uh, you know, to the rest of the world what's happening in their spaces, but also being able to influence media leadership and management in a way that um, you know, is sustainable, in a way that responds to the ever-changing um, you know, technological changes that have impacted the media industry, not just in East Africa, but, but globally. And so in total, we have about 145 students admitted at GSMC since we opened our, door, our, academic, uh, uh, our doors to academic programs. Many people do not see our students. And so sometimes, you know, if you come to GSMC during the day, you might ask, where are your students? Our programs are evening based and, and weekend um, based because all our students are working. Uh, they're practicing journalists. They are uh, either leading or managing media enterprises. And you know, at, as of um, today, we have over 30 different media organizations or communications related organizations represented in the various cohorts of students that we have. And that is a very, very humbling um, you know, reality for us because what that tells us is that we are a, a very, very important player in shaping the media and communications space uh, in East Africa. And we are hoping that you know, the same impact that we are having locally will be expanded within the region, but also in other parts of the world, such as uh, Asia. Um, now, one of the things that gets me very excited is that when you look at, at uh, the, the female to male uh, ratio in, in terms of practicing journalists in the region, uh, Kenya is one of those countries where you know you have both gender represented, and uh, you know the latest data from uh, the Media Council uh, puts that at about thirty percent female to seventy percent male. Now, as GSMC, we are very, very particular about ensuring that there is diversity in our cohort composition, and I, I can proudly say that we have surpassed that mark. As I speak to you, we are looking at 41% female students and 59% male students. And we are, we are very hopeful that in a, in a couple of years, we will be looking at a 50-50 representation because we understand the importance of having both gender uh, shaping and influencing the media and communications landscape, not just in East Africa, but also um, globally. Uh, in terms of how we teach, uh, we, we are very delighted and, and, and excited to bring together both local and international faculty 
all very accomplished uh, in their own right. You have had some of them speak to you uh, this afternoon uh, through the video uh, in terms of the various skills that they, they possess. So if you're looking for a DJ, you know, you don't need to look far. If you're looking for, uh, you know, somebody to guide you on how to choose your scent, you do not need to look very far. Those people form part of the uh, team a very small team, but highly energized, deeply motivated, and very, very passionate about uh, you know, journalism. And so these guys give their lives, um, spend days and nights ensuring that our students are getting quality education. But we are also very uh, uh, careful to ensure that our students can play in the global space. And so um, what we have done in terms of uh, ensuring that there's diversity in the faculty composition is that we have both local and international faculty. So we have three full-time faculty, but we are supported by a very dedicated team. Challenge, but let's see, she'll be right back on uh, shortly. Faculty, uh -huh. many who but nonetheless, no industry, problem. We will keep rolling number. with that one. Remember, there's that quiz that we've asked you. Don't forget to check your chat box and punch in your answers to it. We have a lovely mug, water bottle, and bag to be won by some of us. As we check on Dr. Booker and coming back in, I just want to say once again, oh, we've been lost totally. I hope we're still on. I can see we have technological issues. Let's see if we're still on, ladies and gentlemen, or we've all been kicked out. You most certainly are still on, Gatanga. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. No, not at this point, we're in the program. It can come later. What's happening with the network? You are on. Yeah, we know it's all down. No problem. Let's get ready. When the moment is when it's back up, we keep rolling. I'll apologize. I can still hear rolling. you, Gitonga. Gitonga, you're on. Oh, they can't hear us. Oh, okay. We back up. Yeah. Let me know when you have a signal level. Okay. So I can start talking. Just trying to connect to my hot I can see Andrew is online somewhere. We are coming back up. We are coming back up. Yep, and I see people are coming back in. Guess what? That is technology. That is this time and age. We noticed earlier on there was a network issue, but our tech team was really ready to get us back on board. And strangely enough, we kind of get used to this nowadays because we know this is the platform in which we engage it. So thank you very much for logging back in and joining us on this one. I know that we are back up, 47, good. We're up and running. So Dr. Booker, the signal was lost everywhere. So don't worry, it wasn't just you. We were all unceremoniously kicked off the system, but we are back on. So right back to you. Thank you very much. And we are back on, live on air, as they would say, if this was a broadcast <laughs> a studio. Um, and we apologize for that technical hitch. Um, so as I was saying, uh, you know, we are very um, keen on ensuring that our students can contribute, uh, you know, into the larger global space. And so um, our faculty is also made up of uh, international faculty, uh, folks who are accomplished in their own right, but also a good number who, uh, who are from the industry who are practicing and they are able to come into the class challenge some of the academic notions uh, that you know, might not be applicable uh, in a typical newsroom, but also add value uh, to the discussions that we are having within the class. And it's usually such an enriching environment um, you know, uh, to be in class every, uh, every evening. I get excited about just seeing the sort of passion and the energy that our students bring into the class, you know, having worked the whole day, having worked the whole week, but they will all log in and join the classes, which leads me to something else. When the COVID pandemic struck, uh, we were just at the time thinking about transitioning some of our courses to the online uh, platform, but we were taking baby steps. And so what the pandemic taught us is that we can work with speed. And so currently all our academic programs are being offered um, remotely. Our students are able to join uh, from the comfort of their homes, their countries. They do not have to be separated from their countries, particularly for our students who are coming from Uganda 
and Tanzania and other parts of, of Kenya. Uh, our students can log in, uh, you know, some of them who work in who work late and who work over the weekends. And so it's been quite um, encouraging to just see that the transition from online with all its challenges has also proven to be uh, you know, one of the successes uh, for us here at GSMC. Now the challenge is notwithstanding. I mean, our students struggle with uh, connectivity uh, issues. They struggle with how to you know, get their books. But as a school, uh, we, we are very committed to our students. We have ensured that each and every one of them is able to connect. The IT team supports each and every one of them. And the library is, is you know, right at the front line in ensuring that they have uh, access to their resources. Now, our students, in as much as I said, there are 145 who have come through our doors, are known to us by name. We know our students by name. We know where they work. We know what their concerns are. And we are very passionate about them. And so just that tells you that, you know, for us, it's very personalized learning. We are concerned and very interested in the lives of our students. They're not just numbers that come through our doors, but they're people who we follow, who we mentor, who we engage with on a day-to-day -day basis. And as we look into the future, one of the things that we are, uh, uh, you know, concerned about, and I know the Dean is, you know, very passionate about this, is how do we keep the students in the classroom and raising scholarships to be able to continue contributing to media and communications is one of those things that keeps him awake at night. We are also looking at expanding our academic programs, uh, currently looking at um, a new academic program in strategic communications, which the Dean spoke about, but also revising our Master of Arts in Digital Journalism program to be able to respond to the immediate needs of the market. As you all know, or some might not, the media industry changes so fast. And so for us to be able to keep up with those changes, we have to be able to ensure that our program is responding to those needs, hence the revamp that we are talking about. The future looks bright to, uh, for us, and we are very excited that we are not disconnected from the industry. We are in touch with them. We bring them into our classrooms. We bring them into our academic planning. We bring them into our advisory and everything that we do, and we are also able to contribute to the media landscape in this region. So that's who we are in a nutshell. I welcome you to GSMC. Um, and if you're ever uh, available in the evening and just want to spend some time seeing what we do in our classes, feel free to reach out and we will be delighted to have you join us. Asanteni. So I'd like to invite my colleague, um, Dr. Peter Kimani, I'm hoping that he's back on. And you know, one of the things that I learned about Peter today is that he's a, he's a DJ. So I'm not going to be looking far you know, for when I want somebody to spin that wheel when I have a party. So Dr. Kimani, are you there? Uh, can you hear me? That system is having an issue. Yeah. We can hear you. We can hear you, Peter, but I think uh, we keep losing uh, the uh, case study room in the central uh, studio, as it were. Okay. If you can hear me, why don't you just go ahead because everybody else online can hear you. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you, Laura. Uh, so, um, I, I am uh, the founding faculty member. So when I was uh, to join the s um, it was a, it was a work in progress. We still think it's still a work in progress, but I think we've matured in, in many ways. Uh, so we have consistent, you know, graduation calendar. Uh, that allows students to come through our courses for two, for two years, and that's a major milestone. Uh, so uh, I have been teaching uh, practical elements of journalism. So um, anyone, anyone who comes to my class uh, is, uh, is guided through the processes of producing news. Uh, and that was, that's what I did in my previous life as an editor. I was uh, a senior editor at The Standard, which is the oldest newspaper in this country, more than 100 years old. And, uh, and I really haven't uh, left uh, the newsroom 
because today I was writing uh, a column that would be featured every Friday from tomorrow, um, my, my commentary on politics, culture, and society, which is to say, we don't theorize journalism, we practice it. Uh, so I invite you to uh, look up, you know, what I have to say tomorrow about the state of the nation. So I was invited to reflect on my, uh, my milestones over the past uh, few years. I think I'll be marking six years uh, in two months. And there are too many. So I've already highlighted welcoming students to um, GSMC was a, major, was a major accomplishment for the school and uh, for the faculty that were involved in the, in the development of what became the idea that became the school. Uh, so uh, I have also published besides lots of newspaper articles for local papers as well as for those international. Um, the New York Times, The Guardian are some of the places I've written uh, for or some publications in South Africa, like the Sunday Times. Um, I've also published a few books in this intervening period. Uh, so uh, one of them uh, published in New York in 2017 is uh, is called Dance of the Jacaranda. So if you haven't, uh, I'm not in the habit of talking about my work, but I think that that's an interesting text for those who are interested in the Kenyan history. Um, and just to make uh, some connection between what we do and what you do in different spheres of AKU, including the medicals, uh, medical college, is that um, you require some knowledge of the people that you serve. And I think fiction provides very, very uh, penetrating lenses uh, that allows you uh, an understanding of the psyche or the thinking of, of a people. And, and I think uh, psychology and, um, and, and, and medicine go hand in hand. So fiction writers filter this, you know, what potentially could be years of research, anthropological research into a few hours of our reading. So Dance of the Jacaranda does a look at, you know, 70 years of Kenyan history and reimagining uh, the possibilities for the communities that were created from that, um, those historical um, intersections of uh, Arabs and Indians and Africans and, and, and Caucasians. So uh, potentially uh, when we become a fully fledged faculty of arts and sciences, uh, I assume that uh, Jason C and I, you know, personally, will be interested in, uh, you know, fostering those connections between arts and sciences, uh, because uh, there are very, very clear uh, connections. And uh, we, we have done our bit to lay the, uh, the bricks that will become, you know, a solid component of uh, the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Uh, so the other thing I did over the past um, two years is putting together a collection of short stories that featured generations of Kenyan writers. Uh, I think this is unprecedented. Uh, we have nearly four or five generations, uh, uh, a writer in his 80s, uh, and uh, who is perennially, you know, listed among potential Nobel uh, laureates. Uh, Gugi Wathiongo is uh, one of the contributors to this book. And I have a few students of my own in this anthology. Uh, Faith Anea um, graduated with an MA uh, in 2019, I believe. And uh, we had another uh, student who came through uh, our short, uh, short courses that I ran for creative writers. Her name is uh, uh, Carol, uh, Carol Monda. Uh, she teaches at a Technical University of uh, Kenya. So, and I can extend slightly, uh, you know, some of the milestones. Uh, we have uh, ongoing programs with the Nation Media Group, the Standard uh, Group, and uh, one of um, the groups that I trained about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, uh, were a dozen writers, uh, trainees who came from the Standard. Uh, we stayed with them for about uh, six, six months. Um, and uh, they have uh, now emerged as some of the shining stars in this, in this city. If you look at uh, the production, whether in, um, in print, on radio, or TV, or digital sphere, they are, they are shining brightly. Uh, and that's a kind of testimony we are proud to, you know, to highlight uh, when students 
talk for us. We don't have to talk about our programs anymore. So it's been um, an interesting run um, these past few years. Uh, it's only the beginning. We are in the process of revamping uh, and restructuring the, the program again uh, because the landscape, the media landscape changes all the time, uh, which is why we need to, we have to keep our ear to the ground, understand what's happening in the field and uh, recalibrating our content to fit and be relevant to the needs of the people that we serve. Uh, so uh, in a nutshell, uh, we are, you know, learning every day uh, and learning as we go. Um, and um, uh, some of some of uh, the medics who might be online and uh, might be interested in running uh, commentaries in uh, you know mass mass media, whether it's online or, or in newspapers, you know those are the kind of possibilities we can guide, we can help prepare you for, uh, because we we teach how people can com communicate and convey thought uh, uh, with precision. So. Ali Khan, my colleague, uh, will be very happy to hear such possibilities if you're interested in learning the trope, uh, learning the ropes of, uh, you know, producing opinions and editorials. Uh, he can harness a group and um, we can organize uh, something that allows you some deeper insights into not just what we do, but practicing that as well. Uh, so um, I'll pause there uh, unless there is any question. Um, and um, I hope to engage with you as we come close to the, the University Hospital uh, in a few months. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Peter. Thank you very much for that, Dean Pinter. Thank you very much for that, Nancy. You've heard from faculty. And there's this saying that went around some time ago, Kwitu kwa ground ni different. But is that the case? And I say that because they've talked. But the question is, what do our students say? Remember, we're talking in-house, we're talking internally, and we really want to know, are we doing what we really need to do here in AKU in our different areas? We heard nursing, now you're listening to Graduate School of Media and Communications. So let's take this opportunity to listen to two of our students who we're very proud and excited about and hear what the real stories are from their side. First of all, visiting us from another country, right next door, our good old country, Uganda, is none other than our friend, Alec, um, Andrew, Andrew Arinitwe, who is a freelance journalist, and he is in cohort number three. So we're really looking forward to the day he'll be walking across the stage and graduating uh, from the graduate school. Alex, uh, Andrew, I don't know why I'm calling you Alex. Sorry, my apologies on that one. Andrew, tell us about your experiences. <laughs> student at the university. First of all, it was very exciting uh, to get the scholarship. And I remember Asha telling me uh, Asha Abdallah is working on how to give us the scholarships We're in Uganda by then. And she told me the scholarship is yours. It's not for anyone else. That's when I knew that um, it's written on, it's only for me and no one else. So uh, it was such a great opportunity uh, to just find myself out of the plan start pursuing a master's, uh, especially paid for uh, uh, by someone else than me, because I couldn't figure out how I was going to pay uh, such a huge sum of money uh, compared to the style of the agent. Uh, you know, journalists are not paid that well. If they're paid that well, then other things are probably pursuing uh, uh, a scholarship. So I'm now working with a uh, mail and guardian. Uh, which is interesting because I had to make a very critical decision uh, on my future, and that was to resign because um, I, did, I realized that at NTV Uganda, where I was working, I uh, had time to be able to pursue a master's. So it wasn't within their policy to allow me to study while I work. So it was a very tough decision. I was at the peak of my career. I was flying all over. <laughs> I think I was like, then I was in Netherlands. I think I was in Belgium. I was doing a story on terrorism. And then Asha sent me a message and tells me we want your payment slip. And I, 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 that's when I, it dawned on me that I had to resign and leave this job to get out of the peak of my career, which is very hard for journalists, especially uh, when they start uh, 
uh, when they start uh, when they when they decide to pursue uh, the, the the program, and uh, but they have to resign and then pursue the program. So it was a very difficult decision. But then the fact that they told me that uh, I would I would receive what we may call a stipend, then that made my life very easy uh, because. Um, you have to you need an income uh, to try uh, to balance life and uh, continue living your life normally without having to get uh, hiccups or hurdles along the way so the stipend really made a lot more difference in how i was pursuing my uh, career and then even jumping onto the master's program because by then i think i was paying uh, uh, school fees for my uh, younger sister uh, who is pursuing her degree so and then i had some affairs to take care of the assumption usually is that when you're single you don't have responsibility that people who are married have more responsibility than you but uh, the truth is that even single people still have a responsibility so uh, i had to figure out whether this was going to help me pursue my program the master's program while i also i didn't have a job and luckily enough uh, I ended up working as a freelancer and discovered that uh, uh, it, it, it really had a lot to play with uh, how I would uh, forge my way because resigning is not an easy thing and yet you have to forge your way and still earn a living. And uh, the stipend just made my, uh, my fallback position quite easy. It cushioned me uh, on what would have happened. Uh, on, uh, I would have fallen much more harder than right now. You know, by just having a step, it makes work a little bit much easier and it helps you focus. And then you start thinking about your career, your future, and start looking out for certain opportunities that could have existed. But then the mindset that you have to work on a permanent job had to change. I had to think of now creative ways on how to make an income outside uh, my desk job. And it has given me so much opportunity in terms of networking uh, with people around me and even internationally. Working with the Mail and Guardian, which is just a, an international organization, gives me access to uh, freelancing opportunities within that realm and also exposes me much more to uh, a, a global landscape and audience compared to my local audience. Uh, and of which they don't pay in Uganda shillings, they pay in dollars. So I think my first pay went to $100 and now it's 250 So I have, I have moved from $100 <laughs> doing stories now $250. So, um, and that's because of AKU, because that's the, that's the, uh, that was, that was how I introduced myself. I introduced myself to Maryland Guardian as a master's student pursuing a master's of digital journalism at uh, the GSMC in Nairobi, Aga Khan University. So Aga Khan has such a high profile that I think it's well respected around the, the globe. And uh, just by mentioning that, uh, my editor at the time, Simon Allison, took it very seriously and knew that yeah, I think he got to understand that if someone is pursuing a master's and is a professional journalist, then I could trust him with stories that he could be able to execute in that country because he has never seen me. I've never seen him, uh, but the trust uh, is so important within the realm of journalism. So I executed my, my stories, and um, they have, some of them have gone viral, uh, such as the one of abductions on Bobby Wine. And uh, it has created for me opportunities that I wouldn't have expected right now. People who follow me are distinguished people on Twitter. <laughs> and you're not talking of, um, yes, there's a class of people who follow you, but there's a class of people who follow you who are above that, <laughs> above a certain uh, uh, class. So it's really interesting to see some kind of people following me. I think that my recent, Person who followed me, I think, is the EU to the the EU to the AU, the European Union ambassador to African Union. I think is my recent person just followed me. It's really interesting the class of people who follow you, PhD holders start to follow you because of the quality of work you produce, and that is through the teaching I have received at the GSMC. The quality of teachers, the power of uh, the network that is at AKU is so powerful, not just with the lecturers, but with the students themselves. You can imagine in my class, I have people who are from Al Jazeera, who are from BBC, and uh, various organizations and media institutions that are uh, uh, Nairobi. 
So just from Uganda, Uganda, we have a media industry, but not um, to that level in Nairobi. So just by uh, tapping into that kind of network, that powerful network, which has grown my, uh, my network uh, and then grown my practice and also my visibility is enormous. Uh, that, that the power of the of networking is so powerful, and um, and you can imagine, you know, if you keep rubbing with the celebrities, you become a celebrity. If you keep rubbing with the best of the best in the world, then you become the best. Even when you never intend to become the best, that is how uh, interesting it is in terms of uh, networking in in the uh, uh, with, within the Gakan. Uh, uh, the, 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 the current society. So uh, this has, has been an incredible journey. I'm yet to graduate, I'm in my cohort three. And um, just recently, which is very interesting, this is very interesting. Um, a British journalist uh, just contacted me and told me that he wanted to meet me. I had no idea why he wanted to meet me. So when we sat down, he looked at me and told me uh, how I, did the Bobby Wine story. So I told him how I did it and why it went viral. Uh, so we're discussing why it was so unique and because I had exposed a spy within the inner circle of the seven year regime. Uh, for the first time he had spoken and within the media institution. So he told me he was working on a book and now I'll be one of the people who uh, will have to contribute towards that book. So he's looking for a couple of journalists. So you can imagine how far this has come from me resigning, uh, going to Nairobi, uh, joining a class where there are very powerful networks, uh, joining teachers and uh, lecturers who are able to teach you the practice of good journalism, uh, writing stories, uh, going on the global audience, now meeting people who want to partner with you uh, to be able uh, to expose uh, your, the kind of journalism. So it has been, uh, it's been an incredible journey. So she'll be doing a book with this British journalist who is called uh, Liam Taylor. And it has been such a, a, an incredible journey and, and uh, to be able to scale uh, from a student where I am right now. I think that is what I have uh, for now. And um, I'll look forward to sharing more stories. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much for that one, Andrew. We are waiting for when that book comes out. We are waiting for more other stories as they become viral to see the work that you're doing out there. And thank you for bearing the flag there in Uganda and sharing with us your experiences. And I'm sure as Dr. Booker, Peter Kimani have listened in, and the Dean as well as Sam, they've said, hey, we've done good by you. So thank you for sharing that with us. Now, let's come back here to Kenya. We've left Uganda to Mevuka border, we have jumped the border and we've come back into Kenya to hear of another student who is actually graduating in about a month and a half. Isn't that exciting? This student is cohort number two, who currently works as the accreditation and compliance manager at the Media Council of Kenya. Isn't that fantastic? This is none other than Rebecca Otiso. Rebecca? Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> It's such a good thing to be here. And uh, just behind you, I can see my favorite spot where I used to sit. And that brings some nostalgia to this class. <laughs> I really miss class. <laughs> it's such a good opportunity to come to the spotlight, to speak about my experience at uh, GSMS, uh, GMC, sorry. Uh, so I've been here actually for two years. It's been quite a journey. I've loved every bit of it. It's quite challenging. It, it pushes you to become a better person, to think outside the box. And that is the one thing I love about Aga Khan University is that it does not teach you to become just a student, just to just give you papers for the sake of it. It challenges you as a person to think about getting solutions to the problems that are facing the media landscape today. For example, uh, the entrepreneurial class that we had in the digital, journal, uh, digital journalism class two, we were taught how to become innovators and actually pushed me to apply for the Aga Khan Innovation Innovators in Residence program. 
where one of the projects I had emerged as a finalist. And I guess that's all because of Aga Khan University it taught me, if you're in the media, don't just think about sitting behind the chair, the swivel chair and acting like a boss. You need to go out there and actually do the work. So what do I love about GSMC? Oh, class, class was the most wonderful, wonderful, amazing experience I've ever had because when you came to class, it was not a classroom experience. It was like a melting pot of the best minds right from the lecturer to the students. And I remember most of the time, the subject of the discussion was what was happening in the media landscape at the time. So class was very practical. It was a mix of academia and uh, of course, practical learning because we used to go out to the field most of the time to practice what we learned in class. All the group work was really amazing. And uh, I remember one of the thing that, things that I learned from the group work with my team members was that you really have to learn how to work with other people. And to when, I, okay, I remember when I was coming to Aga Khan University, one of the things that I wanted to become is a multimedia journalist. How to learn how to shoot a video, how to do a radio story, as well as a multimedia story by uploading it maybe on the internet. And I guess at the end of it, I have achieved all that. I have to talk about the research project, which is one of the most important aspects or at the Aga Khan University, because they just, they, they, the school does not just teach you how to like sit behind the class or to just keep quiet. It teaches you how to go out there and actually do a research on a topic that you love. And I remember we were told, please pick up topic that you love. And for me, of course, I chose, I chose sorry, solutions journalism. And I was so happy to find that one of, of the faculty members was really passionate about the subject. And he was one of the of my supervisors, Dr. Sam Kamau. So he took me through the entire research very well. And I really, really enjoyed it. So, uh, but let me not lie to you, it's quite challenging. But if you have the tenacity, and of course the, the, the faculty will guide you through the process. Uh, I also, okay. Uh, I know I'm in the graduating class and I have to tell you, it's going to be quite a, a big accomplishment for me as a mother, as, a, as an academia, of course, and, uh, and also as a person who really is passionate about media. Learning how to balance school life and work is, is very important. And I guess the curricula at uh, GSMS GMC really helped me do that because the classes of course started from Monday to Thursday. On Friday, you could come to the library and do your research if that is what you needed to do or, or you could just stay at home and just finish your assignments. Of course, the online portal also made things a lot easier for us because you could access learning materials in advance and go through them. And so that when you come to class, you're able to interact with the faculty as well as the other students from a point of information. So for me, it's really, it was really a nice experience. And uh, it's something I would advise anyone who wants a world-class education without having to travel abroad to actually consider applying for. Thank you very much. Hey, Rebecca, thanks a lot for sharing that. and. Uh... Yes. Thank you, too, on a light note, for giving us a new name. I think now we are the Graduate School of Media Services, <laughs> GSMS, yes. <laughs> Don't worry, we can laugh about it. It's OK. Yeah. Yeah. We know you're one of us. We know you're one of us. So no problem. We'll keep the name as is. We understand the spirit of it. And yeah. the, one key part was how you talked about family. And we do recognize that many of Aka Khan, we were pretty much a young university in terms of staff. So I think other fellow staff members hearing, even where they're doing their other educational pursuits, to understand that you can be a mother, a father, and still, Joe had a child a year ago in a very demanding time, and he was able to manage that because of the support of the structure. And we know as AKU how we try, like, to keep that atmosphere and environment to support each other. So thanks for reinforcing that 
to us uh, while we were here. Now, that's the academic programs. But there's that other component we touched on earlier on, ladies and gentlemen. The one about trainings, what is all this thing you've heard of terms like, you know, we're the king of acronyms here in Aga Khan, PDCEs, PDCs, EEs, HKS, XYZ. What are all these things and how does that fall within GSMC? I'll give it over to my colleague across the way who will tell us a little bit about this and our training program. Ali Khan? Hey, Gitanga and everyone. Thank you so much. It's it's fantastic to hear these stories and and kind of see how training also feeds into the objective. <clears throat> and, and thanks for clarifying. Yes, we have a lot of acronyms, so so we all get them wrong sometimes. Don't worry. In uh, in just a couple of minutes, I'll take you through really quickly the professional development uh, and executive education portfolio, shedding light on the inspiration for this portfolio, how we're going to grow and transform it, what we offer, and, and to who. And then I'll pass it over to my colleagues from marketing and recruitment. So when the chancellor inaugurated GFMC in 2011, he laid out the vision and some key pillars for the school um, and wanted them to work towards this. One of the quotes that really stood out to me from here is where he mentions that the most important thing we can learn or teach at any school in a world of perpetual change is the ability to go on learning. He adds that none of us have all the answers and quite often we don't even know what questions to ask. So to equip people with the skills to navigate the dynamic media and communications landscape and build capacity, and of course, ask the right questions, GSMC has been running professional development training since the school began, and we've been offering a suite of courses. Now we're in a phase where we're growing and expanding this, this portfolio. We're building in systems and processes to develop sustainable measures. We're expanding our suite of offerings based on current market needs, and we're capturing wider audiences. We're also adapting quickly to digitally transform our programs because we've been used to a very traditional in-person training model. So we're taking them online um, and we're leveraging synchronous and asynchronous learning. So a combination of live sessions and, and using online tools. So the courses you know, are offered across a range of professional development, executive education. I know my colleague, Dr. Kimani talked a bit about the nation and the standard media academies, which are custom trainings that we do for for media houses. We also run a mobile journalism fellowship with Facebook to kind of support the impact of new technology on media. So our courses target media and communications professionals with some programs specifically aimed at civil society organizations and NGOs, because that's an area that we really want to build capacity as part of the larger AKDM. This year, our suite of courses spans across themes like media engagement, specialized reporting, multimedia skills, crisis communications and more. And we recently wrapped up a fully virtual offering of our Engaging the Media for Civil Societies course, which has been a GSMC flagship for years. And it enables participants to navigate and leverage the East African media landscape for advocacy, really building healthy media relationships between civil society um, and the industry. For journalists, we're launching a suite of courses around specialized reporting from health, data journalism, financial and environmental reporting, and it's important to note that GSMC's professional development programs aren't simply a lecture where you come in and listen to a faculty or trainer speak. They combine theory with professional practice to impart skills that can be used immediately in the workplace. So our trainers and faculty leverage techniques from reflective learning to group work, case studies, role play exercises, all in an effort to really impart those learning objectives. In a nutshell, they're, they're very intense. We also prioritize media managers through our Emily program, which Dr. Booker talked about, and we're looking at additional boot camps that will focus on the intersection of leadership and communications, building on our partnership with the Harvard Kennedy School, one of the acronyms Gitanga Management, HKS. That program brings executives together from across Africa in a transformational leadership and communications program. Lastly, as I know you've heard from, from the Dean and from our fake news report, Media literacy is very big on our agenda, especially given the current vaccine rollout, the upcoming elections and more. We want to take a proactive approach to myths and disinformation by equipping the average citizen with the capacity to identify fake news, identify credible sources and consume news media effectively. So programs of this nature are going to roll out pretty soon as well. So I hope you can see that, you know, the training programs that we're building and rolling out aim to develop the media and communications capacity across East Africa but also we're aiming to inspire our alumni to be lifelong learners 
who can constantly come back to us to pursue continued learning and professional development. But of course, all of this wouldn't be possible without a strong team of faculty and staff developing and supporting these programs, which is even more challenging as we move everything online and adapt. But along with designing these high quality programs, recruitment and marketing support is critical to ensuring that the right target audience is in the room, the virtual room, and benefiting from them. So on that note, over to Joe Nyaga, who manages our marketing and recruitment. Great, and thank you for that one. We'll move over to Joe, and I'll ask Joe to join me. Joe, why don't you join us up here in the front and continue with that part. Thank you, Gitonga. So I'll prefer, I prefer to stand. Um, so I'll start by highlighting one of um, the courses that we have, which is Transforming, Transforming Leadership for 21st Century Africa, um, which is our partnership between Harvard Kennedy School of Government and Aga Khan University. It has enrolled over about, uh, it has enrolled uh, participants from 22 countries in Africa, which is quite a huge, quite a huge success, sorry. Um, so these flags show um, the impact that we have, we've had in Africa. Uh, so from East Africa, we have Joseph Boynet, who is well known here in Kenya, who is a former chief of police, now CAS of Ministry of Tourism. Uh, we have Maze Hegab, who is a director at an NGO in Egypt, which is in North Africa, and uh, Mr. Noge, I can't pro pronounce his first name, um, who is a director of finance at Ministry of Finance in um, Botswana, which is in South Africa. So um, one of the key highlights of the program is um, we got we give the participants a chance to reflect on their leadership and how they're doing at their work, and uh, which is one of the things that we'd like to achieve from a leadership um, uh, uh, program as a school, yeah. Um, so over to the next slide, uh, engaging the media program, which is a personal favorite, we have many programs here, but engaging the media stands out for me. It has enrolled over 200 participants from um, NGOs, CSOs, and community-based organizations that Ali Khan has mentioned. And these communicators come from both uh, from Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And we want to work on getting some people from Rwanda and Burundi as well. Some of the organizations we've worked with are um, the Red Cross Society, Farm Access Foundation, and Muhuri, which is Muslim um, human rights organization, which is uh, based here in Kenya. Um, some of the feedback that we've received is that um, this is a very educative program and um, they found that media is a great tool for advocacy. And secondly, um, some of the professionals who attended the course found it as an excellent refresher uh, for, for professionals in the communications industry, which is quite nice. Um, so the Masters in Digital Journalism is um, the oldest program that we have, an academic program started in 2018, as Nancy had mentioned. Um, it has enrolled uh, 124 uh, students from all countries in East Africa, or oh, sorry, the three countries in East Africa, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And we've offered um, scholarships um, of up to 95% as Andrew had mentioned earlier, one of the participants in the course. And um, we've received, uh, we, being the oldest program, it has had such great success. And uh, we now host the program both in Kenya and Uganda, which is quite, quite exciting for us. Uh, one of the key feedback we received from the participants who attend the class is that um, they usually experience career progression either when uh, going through the course or after the course. And one of the key highlights, um, one of the people I'd like to highlight is Dave O'Peel, who was an editor, uh, sorry, a reporter in at uh, Nation Media Group, and is now a regional editor for in Kisi and uh, North Rift, uh, still at the same organization. Um, and um, sorry, the executive masters in media leadership and innovation, quite a mouthful, uh, is another program that we have, an MBA style uh, course, which enrolls senior executives from uh, journalism and communications uh, organizations. And uh, I'd like to highlight um, 
three of the participants, just to give you a um, general feel of who would attend uh, such a program. So we have Mr. Bakari Muchuma, Machumu, sorry. Um, he's a um, group managing editor for Mwananchi Communications Limited, which is the second largest media outlet um, in Tanzania. Uh, John Alanamu, who is uh, famous for his, for his investigative pieces here in Kenya. We know him very well for some of the work he's done. Um, and he, he moved to uh, start his own organization, which uh, also does investigative journalism. You'll see Africa Uncensored uh, on YouTube. Um, they have great um, pieces. Um, Eva, I can't pronounce her last name again, um, who is a managing editor at Flair magazine in Uganda. So last month I got to talk to um, each and every one of the students in the EMLI course, uh, Executive Master's in Leadership and Innovation. And one of the key feedback that I received that stuck to my mind is that um, in the next slide, ever since um, they started the course uh, in February, none of them had missed a single class. There was, they have had 100% attendance, which speaks a lot about the program, given that these people are senior executives in, in, in their organizations and they're quite busy. So this is quite something and shows the kind of work Nancy is, um, is, is producing. So thank you so much. I'll hand it back to Gitonga. Um, thank you. All right, thank you for that, Joe. Really appreciate you sharing that with us. We're coming fast to the end of what we want to share today. And as we get that, I'll ask us all to do one thing. Right hand up. Let's see, right hand up. I know you're hiding behind the cameras, but those who are around me can do it. Left hand up. Cross them tightly across yourself. Yeah, squeeze and release. Don't you miss a hug? <laughs> I miss hugs. I really do miss hugs. So that's a self-hug. When you're feeling sad, it does two things. Gives you a great stretch and releases some good endorphins, and you just feel love. Love yourself always. And I say that because our friends who are going to be introduced by the Media Innovation Center I miss them coming over because they used to come with chocolates and sweets, which I really love too. So since we don't have that love, we'll do a little hug and be able to enjoy ourselves on that one. Our lovely friends who are across the street, literally they're down the street from us in Peponi, our good friends from the Media Innovation Center, the other half of the Graduate School of Media and Comms. And with that, I hand it over to my buddy, Hezbon Owila, to lead us through the media innovation. Yes, man? Thank you, Gitonga, <laughs> for doing such a wonderful job. Uh, you'll allow me to share <laughs> our presentation. Yeah, so my name is Hesbon Hansen Ochiang Owila. I've been introduced to the media innovation team here at uh, GSNC. I'm currently serving as a research associate, and today I have this honor of sitting in for my director, Dr. Njoki Chege, who is uh, not around. So I'll briefly take you through what we do at the Media Innovation Center here at SNC, Aga Khan University. Uh, in my presentation, mine is going to be very short, uh, but uh, today we also have our colleagues from the DW Academy. So I have with me here, Stefan and Julia Wegner. So they'll take at most two minutes to just talk about uh, Media Futures East African project. And then of course, we we've also been honored to be having with us our innovators in residence. So I will also introduce them and probably give their team leaders one minute each as they speak to the slides that I will display. So uh, first I'll talk about the Media Innovation Center here at Aga Khan University, which was established in 2019, and it is fully funded by the German Development Bank, KFW, within the Media uh, Futures Project in East Africa. So broadly, the Media uh, Futures Project in East Africa has the objective of strengthening the long-term viability 
of the media in East Africa, making some demonstrable contribution to the quality of the media and the access to the media in East Africa. So the Media Innovation Center, which is within this wider project and part of uh, uh, the Aga Khan University, works essentially to support the next generation of media entrepreneurs who are working you know, on unique ideas within the media industry and tinkering with uh, novel storytelling uh, you know, forms and, and, and genres. So as part of the Media Futures Project, we essentially work to incubate, accelerate, and support innovations that contribute to the media landscape in a sense that makes that media landscape a lot more free, a lot more independent, a lot more innovative, a lot more evidence-based and committed to the society in a way that is viable. And of course, when we talk about media viability, we are looking at it from the DW conceptualization of the media viability that has these two strands, you know? So there is the element of quality content that responds to the needs of the society, and then the element of financial sustainability. So all the innovations that we are incubating, accelerating, and of course, supporting through training, coaching, and mentorship, you know, have to be anchored around quality content and financial sustainability. So briefly, we have so many programs and one of our flagship programs is a one year residency program called the Innovators in Residence, uh, in which uh, the Innovators in Residence have a period of one year at the Innovation Center here. And during this one year, we support these Innovators in Residence and the wider members of our community through training, mentorship, coaching, and then the innovators who are in residence, other than just the training, coaching, and mentorship, have an additional grant of 20,000 US dollars that is meant to help them transform their ideas into the next viable media enterprises. So where we are today, we have had two successful innovators in residence, our first cohort. So that's the bank media and uh, ludic work. So they did their residency and they're already out there running their ideas as media enterprises. So today we are here to introduce uh, our current cohort of innovators in residence. But of course, this slide, you can see the team. We are a team of five within the GSMC family. Uh, so we have Njoki is our director, Claire, who is our grant administrator, then there's Caleb and our community manager, Benson. Now, what we have as our innovators in residence, and they're essentially part of the AKU family for the next one year, and even after that, they'll become part of our alumni. So the first group that we have in the current residency from Kenya is called the Lam Sisters. Uh, so Lam, the Lam Sisterhood. So the Lam Sisterhood is a very interesting group. And what they are looking at, they are looking at, uh, you know, African stories, uh, especially African women's stories. And what these stories do is that they make these African women and their stories feel seen, heard, and loved. So I will just give Alea one minute to take us through these three slides, you know, that capture what uh, the Lamb Sisterhood does. Alea. Hello everyone. It is lovely to meet you all. I am Alea. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great. Yes, we can I hear you. I am Alea Kassam, the A and the Lamb Sisterhood. And with my partner, great. And uh, with my partners, Laura Ikumbo and Anne Mora, we fill the world with stories for African women to feel seen, heard, and beloved. So give you a, this is a little, a little pictorial of Laura, myself, and Mora when we were producing the award-winning theater show, The Brazen Edition, which uninvisible the lives of extraordinary Kenyan women from our history. 
And this was the inspiration of our flagship product, which we will be um, in residence with the Brazen podcast. Um, if you can share the following slide. Great, so the Brazen universe. Our innovation is developing multimedia content that shares the life stories of African women who've shaped our reality. I'm gonna deviate from the slides just a moment because I wanna tell you about what we do. Fact, Mekatelili Wamenza at over 70 years old walked from Kisi to Kilifi. Story, Mekatelili was imprisoned in Kisi. Home was Kilifi and she had to walk. You know how much walking that does to a body? You stop being a person. You become just a body walking. You become toenails falling. You become blisters bubbling, joints swelling, heart pulsing, pounding, breaking, nobody. Yet she kept walking. For over 1,000 kilometers, she kept walking until she was home to find that she had spurred a revolution. The fact is, we are hungry for these stories. African women are erased from our history by the colonizers who erased our stories, by patriarchy which suppresses the stories of women, by leadership, terrified of the power that African women have, and we must fill in the gaps. As Mariam Kaba reminds us, history is instructive not because it offers us a blueprint for how to act in the present, but because it can help us ask better questions for the future. And that is why the Lamb Sisterhood does what we do. And we're delighted to be the innovators in residence this year. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alea. Next, uh, I'm gonna start less than two minutes uh, with Minority Africa. And I want to be that uh, Caleb Okereke is here with us. Yeah, I can see you, Caleb. Take it off. Hi, thank you, Hesman. Uh, hi, everyone. Good to be here. Good to see everybody. Um, if you can't tell right now, I'm at the media, <laughs> MCI Media Hub in Uganda at the Minority Africa office. That's a small on the door there. Um, but yeah, so my, my Minority Africa is a publication that uses data driven multimedia journalism to tell minority stories from across Africa. We prioritize solutions journalism, of course, but we also want to do um, radical storytelling. Uh, we want to talk about things that people consider like taboos and, and on what. Um, so the core team is, is with about 10 young people who are working remotely from across Africa. We're growing, interestingly, and texted innovators and residents are growing even more. Um, but there's me, there's uh, who's managing editor and co founder, Florence Kyohangiwe, who's a sexual minorities editor, there's Shamir, who's a business development manager and co founder, there's Farida, who leads our data desk, Israel, who leads our investor desk, and Dipshika Pamaso, who's in charge of our advocacy and operations. Um, we now have a team member from Qatar and one person from the United Kingdom. We have a woman's editor in the UK and we have uh, an intern in Qatar. Um, but both of us, so the, the bulk of us are here in Uganda, we need content in this small office here where we basically think of new things to do every day. Next slide now, that's brilliant. Yes, so yes, so I, as I said, we want to tell minority stories from across Africa, um, but then what minority stories? So for us as a newsroom, that definition is called evolving, but it's also rooted in two things. Number one, it must be social and systemic like oppression. It's never really about numbers but about the opportunity to like, deny people because of a certain reason. And when we say minorities, it's good that we realize that there are people who are doing the minorities and you know, it's not an autonomous decision. But we do cover women as minorities. We cover sexual minorities, religious minorities, ethnic minorities, persons with disabilities, and refugees. And we do all of this through a solutions to analysis and lens. You'll often find us ranting on a category on our website called Voices, where we do, we published something yesterday on Acorn City and how it's a capitalist you know, institution camouflaging as something for Africans. Um, but yeah, so the idea is journalism for minorities by minorities. So our team is made up of minorities themselves. We have editors and I even don't have to get more for each of our desks because I don't like do things regarding women's stories. I'm not a woman, but we want to create an Africa in which minorities are better represented and understood. 
And we've done this in three ways, one of which is running the online publication, which we've done for a year, and which will, of course, scale up with AKU's help. But also, we want to create and sell online courses, which is a revenue stream for us. And we know that there's a market for it because when the people are more eager to learn things from us generally. And then we want to teach better ways to approach allyship, you know, uh, on these courses. But also, primarily, we know that the work of changing perceptions is, is too, like, too broad for us to do. So one of the last things we want to do is infiltrate newsrooms outside of us with minority content. So we want to talk to other newsrooms and create newsroom partnerships where we supply these newsrooms with content that we've created ourselves on minority issues. So please join us, subscribe to our newsletters. We have one now, we're increasing them to about two or three. We're launching a WhatsApp newsletter as well. Um, just happy to be the Innovating Residence. Uh, incredible. Thank you, that's fun. Thank you, Caleb. Uh, one thing I need to know is minority Africa is uh, infiltrating newsrooms all over the world, but they are from Uganda. Uh, the Lam Sisterhood, uh, you know, making the entire universe brazen, but they are from Kenya. So next, we have our innovators in residence from Tanzania Honor Stories. And with us here is Tulanana to take us through what Honor Story is all about. You're muted. You're muted, Tulanana. Hi, sorry. Hi, my name is Tulanana Bohela, and I'm from Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. I'm a journalist as well as a media entrepreneur. I've co-founded Honor Stories, and uh, with my co-founder Prince Lee, who couldn't be here with us today. Um, so, what is Honor Stories? We we call ourselves a storytelling um, company, and we help companies, brands, and people to identify and tell their stories well. Um, we do this through three, four major ways, and that's in, through uh, digital media training, connecting people more with um, how they can use the digital platforms better. Uh, we are pioneering in, um, in VR and AR here in Tanzania uh, in the scopes of immersive media and how that can be used to tell more African stories and journalistic stories as well. And uh, we feature, we do a lot of documentaries and uh, news features as well and create digital content creation for the um, cohort here uh, with the Aga Khan, we are launching something that we've been very excited to do for a long time, which is uh, on a Kesho, a story hub, a graphic um, news story hub, journalism story hub, where we would like to create more explainer pieces in Kiswahili, explaining the news um, to Tanzanians, as, especially around their identity. What we realize is that um, for a lot of online media news that uh, is being consumed here in Tanzania, it's the what we call fast food of news. It's the what, the who, and uh, the where, but never the how and the why. And um, uh, oftentimes this has led to a lot of online TVs propping up, mushrooming up, and basically replicating the same. And so we are coming in and saying that, well, people need more vegetables, need more vegetables to their news. And we want to be able to create um, explainer deep dives um, that will be multimedia um, on uh, for for the Tanzanian uh, youth and consumers. Um, so yeah, uh, that's on our stories and that's on our care show. Thank you to Lanana. Uh, finally, we have uh, part of our first cohort, which now forms our alumni. So this is Louis Quax. And of course, we have the banks. Uh, the tail end of this presentation, we'll talk about the banks. But at this point, uh, I want to give uh, two minutes uh, to our DWA partners. Uh, they told you we have the Media Futures East Africa. So uh, the Media Innovation Center is part of the Media Futures East Africa, where we partner with DW Academy on so many other activities that we are involved in. So to take it off is Julia Wegner is the project manager of the Media Futures East Africa. Thank you, Hesben. Uh, great to see you all and great to see the DSMC's um, colleagues again. It's been a long time and Gitonga, I promise to bring uh, sweets again and chocolate next time we're allowed to come <laughs> over. Um, and yeah, as has been said, we uh, are a big project and the MIC, the Media Innovation Center is a big pillar of it. 
Um, this is what the whole project looks like in theory. Uh, in working line one, you see what uh, has been just been describing on the on the very left. And working line two is what we decide, describe as uh, the the rest of the project, the Media Futures uh, East Africa project. But really, we're um, a combined project. We do everything together, work very closely hand in hand, um, all in the name of media viability and media innovation. So um, to rather than bore you with the details, and as this event is called Spotlight, uh, we thought we'd spotlight two parts of the rest of the project that happens. One is the consultants um, for media viability. So as um, Hesman has already mentioned, we work in Uganda, Tanzania, and Kenya um, for this project. And in all three countries, we're training media viability consultants. So um, people from very diverse professional backgrounds who can go into media houses. And here we're focusing more on smaller and medium-sized media outlets, often in rural areas, to help them support with their viability. And if you wonder, what is this viability I keep mentioning? It's basically the ability to produce um, quality, quality journalism sustainably. And you know, see in my background, all the aspects that belong um, to that. Um, and there's, a, there's an explainer, I'll set a um, video to explain a bit more about that. I'll send the link into the chat for those who are interested in hearing a bit more about it. Um, if you could just move on to the next slide. Um, thank you, husband. Those are the um, six areas that the media viability consultants focus on and are um, looking to support the media houses they work, on, um, work with on. I'm sure a lot of the students um, as part of GSMC would provide great benefit in adding to this uh, and we'd love to exchange more uh, with whoever is keen on, on hearing more about media viability um, and, and, and sharing their insights with us as well. Um, I'll pass on to my colleague Stefan who will briefly spotlight uh, the second thing we'd like to spotlight which is the regional exchange platform East that we have and um, which we'd also love to connect to GSMC through and with. Thank you, Julia, and I try to be quick. <laughs> um, thank you so much uh, for having us in this uh, exciting event here. I had so many insights today. Thank you for that. And I'm more convinced even than before that we have to join more forces between Deutsche Welle Academy, GSMC and the Media Innovation Center because we all have this shared goal to improve quality uh, journalism in East Africa. And I wanted to give you a, a small preview on the right side, you see on the slide of the East platform. And what is the thinking behind? I think um, when we talk about media viability, never in history, there has been such an interesting moment for media because on the one side, we have kind of golden age, some would say of journalism, but on the other side, we have an info ecosystem that is full of mis- and disinformation. We have a lot of challenges for commercial media to, to have sustainable business models. And, and so I think there are no solutions out there, easy answers to these questions. There are complex issues. And we need to, to have a kind of exchange of ideas between the brightest minds on media innovation and media viability. And this is the idea of our East side, uh, magazine style blog where we bring together researchers, practitioners, innovators, and they write and talk about um, key issues of media innovation. How can we find solutions to all the challenges? I'm really looking forward to more exchange with this great expertise you have at, at uh, GSMC also on the East side. And the East side is also getting content from partners in Uganda and Tanzania, for example. And this is something unique, I think, in the East African info ecosystem that we are going to publish soon um, in a couple of weeks. It will be online and you will have the, the opportunity to, to look at it. And even if you want to engage with us, we are here for you to um, open for your suggestions, of course, and looking forward to your insights. So thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, I think uh, that gives you what the Media Innovation Center here at GSMC does in a nutshell. And of course, the larger family of the Media Futures East Africa, which is part of what the Media Innovation Center is working with. Uh, one thing that I probably want to finish with is the fact that a lot of what we do 
promotes adaptive approach to innovation for media viability. And research is a very key part of what we do. At the moment, uh, we are involved in an East African wide research uh, called the Innovation for Media Viability Research. We are collecting data from Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. We are pretty much done with Kenya. We are doing the data cleaning and data analysis. So in the next uh, three months, we'll pretty much be done with uh, that research. That is the last thing I would say about the Media Innovation Center. Thank you very much. Back to you, Itonga. Wow, we've heard it all, ladies and gentlemen. From tattoo makers, boat racers, interior designs, innovation, telling stories, producing new content online, and best of all, chocolate. Yes, <laughs> that's why we themed it chocolate. We are going to get chocolate. You heard it yourself. She said it, and I want my chocolate, Julia. Ladies and gentlemen, we come to the conclusion of this event, but we promised you something much earlier on, the winners of today's quiz. We have two winners. And guess what? Winner number, what do you call it? The runners up, number two is, let's see if you can all read that name. Oops, it moved to the other camera, I moved there. That is the winner. Nazra, you win a water bottle from the Graduate School of Media and Communications. You like my character too, huh? Or is it there? Yeah, I'm not so good at drawing, but I try, yes? And winner number one, Drum rolls, ladies and gentlemen. Winner number one is boom. Joyce Wangu, you win that special cup. To Takunyo at Chai Pamoja. We will drink tea together with you. Yes. So congratulations. We really thank you for participating and joining. And what Stefan said at the end is actually why we do this. We've seen some of the comments on the chats at the end from fellow faculty and colleagues across the campus saying, hey, I didn't know this, or this is exciting, this is enlightening. Even within GSMC has said that, the importance of sharing information together, because we're all so very busy where we are. So Henry, we see you're online with Carol. Thank you very much for joining us and putting this together, as well as with the rest of the team, Dr. Booker, your team out there, Dean, for allowing this to happen, and very, very importantly, I move to this device. You can all see in my camera, the team behind. Yes, we got those in the background who have been helping us make this work. From Soraya, Christine, Dan and Laban, hidden, but so critical in terms of making this work. And most importantly, each and every one of you for giving us time today to be able to share our story, our students. Thank you so very much for sharing your story with us. With that, ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful, safe time. Get your vaccine if you can, whichever it is you prefer, but stay vaccinated, stay safe, keep your mask always around you, and we hope to see you very, very soon once we, turn, once we tame this monster called COVID. Have a wonderful afternoon. And as we conclude over here, please share comments, anything you want on the chat. We will share with you our introductory video for those who are not there. Joyce Nazra, you have my email or rather Christine's email. Contact us, put it in the chat. We'll get your water bottles to you and your mug. Have a wonderful day. Ciao. Hi, I'm Lawrence Pintak. I'm the Dean of GSMC. I like to tell people that I'm a journalist masquerading as an academic. I covered the world for many years as a CBS correspondent. I helped build journalism schools in the US and various other places. And now I'm here, eh, kind of, sort of. I commute between Kenya and Scotland. Doesn't everybody? And my secret skill is I like to race big sailboats. Hi, my name is Nancy Booker. I'm an assistant professor and the director of academic affairs here at the Graduate School of Media and Communications. My secret skill is interior design. I not only spend my time dreaming about the spaces, but I also create them. So if you want your place turned around into this beautiful space, reach out. My name is Peter Kemani, a senior lecturer at GSMC and the founding lecturer. 
uh, my special skill is reggae. Uh, I wanted to be a reggae DJ. Maybe it's not too late to be an IT professor. Or if you have an event, you could have me come spin the discs. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Kamau, faculty member at the Graduate School of Media and Communications. I joined GSMC back in 2015. I teach in the MA program and the professional development courses. What's my special skill? I pick sense, good and bad sense, along the corridors, in the offices, cars, 